What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're actually gonna be working on the Brake Master. So as you can see, the rear seal for my Brake Master, I'm pretty sure has been leaking for a little while. It's been kind of beating up on my brake booster. So we're just gonna go in. Uh, we're gonna do a complete process of how to remove this, bleed this, and basically just have it ready to go so you will be safe on the road. So the first step is obviously you need to get a, I would say this is probably the best brand to get for your brake master. Uh, I, do you, is Centric OEM? Do you know? I don't believe it's no. OEM. No, okay. It's a pretty standard replacement. Yeah, yeah. So um, they, these can be kind of pricey. Um, I got a deal on one because they someone was having a sale. I think it was like Rock Auto or someone was having a sale. So I kind of jumped it right into it. And I was like, I, I know I need one, so I'm going to get one. There are two different things that you need to know. These bores on the back here are different between years. So um, this is a one-inch bore, I'm pretty sure. Um, I think there's like a one-inch and a half-inch. This is a 92. This is the right one. Uh, we're good. But yeah, so now we're just going to get into this. Um, so now this is a bench bleeding process. So typically, Robbie said, when they come with brake masters, you actually get these uh, caps here that you can actually put hoses on so you can be able to bench bleed this. Uh, mine did not. I don't know why. It is what it is. Probably because I got a deal for it. But um, yeah, basically what you're going to do, you're going to put uh, these here, okay, these nozzles. You're going to hook up two hoses there, and you're going to fill the uh, reservoir. Take the hoses, dip them in the fluid so that the ends are below the fluid line. And then find a screwdriver or something. You can basically act like you're hitting the brake pedal. So yeah, he's just using like an extension just to help push the plunger in. And so what basically practically this is doing is this is just bleeding all the air out that's actually in the piston and it's filling up uh Watch your fingers. yeah it's just using the f fluid from the reservoir basically just to bleed the system instead of you having to put it in the car bleed all the brakes and then just keep going because without doing this it would take forever so yeah so how you can tell the air bubbles you'll actually see from the lines you'll see them kind of float through up from the piston back into the reservoir and this is something that you don't want to rush. You can just uh, take your time with this just because, again, you want to make sure that you're going to get every ounce of air out of the piston. So I always had a question, though. So after we do this, so there's fluid in the reservoir. There's fluid in the piston. Once we what take the, these off. What this basically does is it gets a majority of, it gets the air out of the piston. And then, yes, when you take the uh, fittings off and hook up the brake lines, you are going to get some air, air in, there, in there. So you have to But still. it's not a fully aerated piston. Okay. So you okay. are going to have some fluid in there. It's okay. going to help with the bleed procedure. I see a lot of guys, they end up just throwing a dry brake master cylinder on the car. And then um, when they fill it up, when they start the bleeding procedure, they crack the lines right here at the master. Okay. And bench bleed it that way that way okay until um it's ready to have the calipers bled but that makes more of a mess because all the fluid it's just dropping down the frame yeah. rail and everything okay. so this tends to be a little cleaner because you can pull those caps out fairly quickly and throw the brake gotcha. on there okay so. perfect okay that was that was my main question because i've watched videos on this and i i just didn't know um, cause I was like, well, what the hell we're doing this process. And then no matter what, even when we take these fittings out, it's going to bleed all this brake fluid out. So I was like, there's still gonna be air there, but now it makes sense that it's just not a fully aerated piston. Yeah, so now it, it helps get the process a little most bit easier. of the air out of the system okay. in the master, at least. Perfect. You can see the rust on the, uh, brake booster. So, um, and you can actually see where some of the brake fluid was starting to eat out the paint on the frame rail. So that's another main reason why we're doing this. But what we're gonna do, we're just gonna unplug the sensor here. Kind of corroded. And we're gonna just tuck that under the booster. And then uh, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to kind of screw it in a little bit just to, so it'll give us room for us to be able to actually take we're off. have to remove that. Oh, just remove the entire thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we're gonna have to remove that. So I just have uh, the Z-Spec kit here. We'll have to take those bolts off and whatnot. And then it is pretty simple. Uh, it's just got two brake lines here, uh, at least for my NA. So there's a brake line here, and then there's a brake line right behind the throttle cable right there. Yeah, and then there's uh, two bolts there. So once we get all that done, we'll uh, 
get you back into uh, this whole situation. So a little trick of the trade, what you can do here, um, instead of just breaking the lines out and letting everything kind of just pull down, down the frame rail and whatnot, what you can do is actually take a suction, suction out most of the fluid out of the reservoir. So then you're only gonna be use, losing like a little bit of fluid, basically whatever is within the piston and whatnot. So as we did, we put a pan under, we're gonna uh, raise the back right now. So um, when we have to bleed everything, we'll be able to get that done in one shot. All right, guys, so we got the lines taken off. We got the two nuts taken off. Robbie's just kind of sanding the brake booster just because of the rust or whatnot, trying to just clean it up a little bit. Um, so, yeah, mainly what the issue is, is uh, typically when you see something fail like this, it's usually the seal back by the plunger. So you can see just all the corrosion that it was doing and stuff. So it's definitely nice to see a new one for sure. And again, you can always do this. Um, you can like spray paint these, clean these up, spray paint them just so like the rust won't keep eating away. But yeah, so that's what we're doing there. Again, you wanna be aware when you're taking the nuts off, uh, the one that's closer towards the engine sometimes slips off and there's a little Sitting tray. Right there. Yeah, there's a little tray the, uh, in there. And... It's the heat shield for the fuel lines. Yeah, it's and typically what... where it falls. Yeah, and it, it just lands right in there. Yeah, so. We'll grab a magnet, pull that out. But uh, yeah, besides that, we're pretty much good to go basically to just uh, go ahead and start uh, installing a new one. What we just did is we just went around and did our bleeding for the brakes, okay? So I have my bracket hooked back up. I have everything hooked up. So now what we do, okay, is you need to bleed the brakes farthest. You start with the farthest from the brake master. So you're gonna start on a left-hand drive car, passenger, uh, rear passenger side. You're gonna bleed that a couple times. Robbie has his like little gist that he does. I think it's like three or four times per wheel. So he did that one. Then he moved to the rear driver's side. Then we went to the front passenger side and then to the front driver's side. And then, um, so we did all this. He, then basically well, that was with all the car off. We started the car. Uh, he had me test the brakes a little bit, putting the car in gear, whatever, this and that. It still feels like the pedal's a little soft. There's, it definitely works. There's no issues with it working or whatnot but the pedal feels a little soft than what it did before. So um, he did tell me that there's one thing that we also have to do is in uh, NA2 plus O, the ABS module is under this uh, plastic interior piece here. So there's two bleeders on the uh, ABS. Where Basically, the bleeders are, are right on top. You can see them. So over here, there's an FR. Front right. And FL for front, front left. left. So th these are, this nipple's for the front brakes, and this nipple's for the rear brakes. Okay. So you're gonna probably want to start with the rear nipple, and then bleed the front nipple. Yeah. But this is after doing after the calipers. The calipers. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Calipers first, and then the ABS module, if I remember correctly. Got it. So that's what we're doing now. So we're gonna start bleeding these. I'm gonna get out of his way. You wanna make sure your master always has fluid in it because if it doesn't and you're pumping, you're gonna suck air back into the system and then you're gonna have to redo the entire thing in it, which is, sucks. So we're turning back here. Well, basically I have a hose in a small reservoir so that way it doesn't dump fluid all over the car. You wanna pump it up? Yep. Holding. Again. Holding. Try to catch all that fluid. Yeah. Alright, again. Holding. Alrighty guys, so finally back home after the brake master job at Robbie's house. It went super smooth, so again, I just wanna make sure uh, to reiterate to you guys that it's gonna be important for you guys to understand that the bore size between the masters, I'm gonna put that link in the description below of the form that I found the information on. Um, so it just depends on the year that you guys are gonna have, so I just wanna make sure that you guys are gonna be safe with that. I don't wanna lead you in the wrong direction. Um, but yeah, after we bled everything, we dropped the car, took it out for a spin, 
brakes worked fine and uh, I put probably, I just drove home back to Boston from Connecticut and I probably just put another, I don't even know, like 80 miles I'd say, maybe more, I, I don't know. Just wanna say I miss you guys so much and uh, I'm sorry for the lack of content. I've been working like crazy, I've been doing adulting things, so uh, it's the off season and it's cold out. I've been able to have a few projects that I've been able to get my hands on. So uh, going from there, I'm gonna be posting that up soon. So again, thank you for sticking with me. With that being said, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel, hit that button there, show us some support. And if you guys are looking for any additional content, all you have to do is click one of the links here. I'll see you guys in the next one.